Right then guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. Today is going to be something that I think anyone with an EP3 should be doing, pre-facelift or not. I have a facelift EP3 and Honda changed a lot of things between the pre-facelift and the facelift EP3. One of the things they changed that was for the worse was they put carpet rear arch liners in the rear. These literally just hold moisture and sit against bare metal so the chances of there being rust behind here are a lot higher. Fingers crossed mine isn't too bad. This is probably going to be a multi-day video just because at this point in time I don't know what's behind there and there was no point in me buying stuff if there is nothing wrong but also if there's holes and things I need to get that sorted and it's a longer process. So yeah this is going to be I guess day one of this of just figuring out what's going on. Taking them out anyway they're not going to go back in but yeah there isn't really anything left for me to say so we jack the car up and let's get on with it. Wouldn't it be cool to just swipe into the future and just see the car jacked up? It'd be way easier. Something like this. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about, this whole bit in here, I mean, look, look at that. That's just holding dust, oh, lovely. <laughs> the idea is to get this out and behind here is just exposed metal. So I'm hoping here isn't rusty and has loads of holes in. Basically it goes all the way in, it's all around here, all the way back to here. So I'm gonna get this out on both sides. I do have to let you into a secret. You see this up here, this thing seems to be held in with a multi, I don't know if this is just my car, but this seems to be held in with like pop clips like this, then screwed in like this sort of thing here, I don't know if you can see that, and then these little pin things as well, well those might not actually be doing anything, I'm not sure. That sounded pretty cool. Up here was a screw and on both sides they were rusted out and had to be drilled out. So I preemptively saw this coming, so I decided to do this yesterday before I filmed the video, just to make sure, so I sort of cleaned up around areas and what have you, get them ready to come out. So yeah, word of warning, this up here on both sides of mine was rusted out. So you might have to cut this out, drill it out or whatever, but everything else in theory should be okay. I'm hoping that it comes out relatively easy, but let's find out. So the tools I'm going to use is Phillips head screwdriver, one of these trim prying apart tools, and I've got this little pick thing. Not sure if I'm going to need this or not, but I don't know, I haven't done any research on how to actually do this, so I'm just sort of making it up as I go along, but I'm going to start, what am I going to start with? I'm going to start with unscrewing the screws because I know how to do that. <laughs> right, that looks like all the, that looks like all of the screwdriver related bits. Right, let's go for these little clips. Whoops. Oh, it's so dusty. <laughs> yeah, I just broke that one too. Aha, I win. God, that was well in there. I mean, I've taken the whole thing out as one, so I'm not surprised that was difficult to get out. Surely that's not it. That would amaze me if that was all it was. I think this is actually ready to come out, which is crazy. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys a better view for this. Oh, I've got dust in my eye. Oh God. Assuming that this thing is just gonna come out, I don't actually know right now. I mean, I'm just gonna pull and hope. Okay. That is nowhere near as hard as I thought it was going to be. I mean, insanely dusty. Look at all of this. Unbelievably, and I'm very glad about this, I think I'm all right. I might have one. Oh no, that's where the hole for the... Oh, I might actually be all right, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. This looks very, very promising. All right, I'll give you guys a closer look. As you can see, I've got away with it pretty much everywhere, apart from this area here is the only area that is slightly rusted. That's around the hole where the plug went. Apart from that, all of this. Luckily for me is actually okay, which I'm very happy about. I suppose the thing to worry about is actually the other side because the other side is where all of the muck and dirt from the, the gutters and what have you would be. So we're not out of the woods yet. Okay, so obviously it's the same process just on this side. So you know what? I'm just gonna do this. You don't need to see me do that. You've seen me do it already. So I'll get back to you when it's ready to pull this thing out. A few moments later. Here we go. Let's take this one out. Oh. It's attached under there as well. I don't think that was on the other one. Whoops. Wow, 
Wow, I'm very lucky. Oh, what have I pulled out here? Oh, this is a breather for the fuel, I guess. As you just heard me prodding. Nothing is too bad. A similar sort of situation at this little plug area. Actually, if anything, this side's better for that. As you can see, just surface rust, no holes, which I am very happy about and I'm very lucky. I do need to figure out a way of doing something with the breather hose for the fuel. While I'm here as well and the car's jacked up, I'm going to clean my rear lower control arms because it's easy to get to right now and it will look way better if it's nice and red. I'd say that's good enough considering you can't see them up close anyway. Just for anyone's reference if they wanted to know, so this is the passenger side and this one I didn't know about until I ripped it out. So this one is different because this I assume is where the exhaust is on the other one hence why that one doesn't have it. And then this bracket is also this clip here that's what's holding the breather hose on. Okay guys that's where I'm going to leave it for today I'm just going to put the car back together now. I've cable tied the breather neck pipe overfill pipe for the fuel I've cable tied that into one of the holes that have left from one of the clips I broke so for now that's not an issue but yeah I'm gonna put this back together and sort of do some research on what I should do next so I guess the next time you see me I will have the answers to that question because I don't right now and I don't know when that's gonna be so I'll catch you guys at some point in the future eventually Right, okay guys, as you can see, in a different place, pretty echoey. That's because uh, it's about two and a half, three weeks later from the last clip you saw. I had to find somewhere that I could leave the car up like this for more than 24 hours and there's nowhere really like safe for me to do that. I don't have a driver or anything. So this is basically where I found myself. I'm at a farm. This job is gonna take, well, there's 24 hour like drying times between two of the coats. That's why I've had to find somewhere like this. I don't know if there's another way of doing it quicker, but this is just the stuff that I found. What I've done already is jack the car up and I've also unmounted the bracket, the holding plate for the brake lines on the rear. What I thought I'd do is before I've started with anything, I'll just show you the bits that I'm gonna use for this so first of all I've got this set of like wire wheels to go in a drill so I can quickly get all the surface rust off once that's done I'm then gonna clean it down with my favorite spray CT1 Multisolve to clean it up and get it ready to spray make it sure it's all clean and dry and then I've got this zinc galvanizing spray which will be the next step and that's basically today's steps that's what I'm trying to get done on both sides today this stuff takes 24 hours to dry so coming back from that tomorrow we'll be then hitting it with this under seal stuff which it says with added wax oil in it so basically what I'll do is I'll leave the link to all of this stuff in the description if you want to do it exactly how I'm doing it. There's probably other ways of doing it. I also don't know whether you should trust whether the way I'm doing it because kind of just making it up. I'm waffling. Let's just get on with it. I just thought I'd show you one last time a quick before because this is probably more of a refresher for me than it is for you because it's been two and a half weeks and not three seconds. You can see little bits of surface rust here and what have you. So I'm basically gonna hit all of this with the wire brush and the wire wheel and hopefully it's gonna look a lot better. Gonna be a dusty job. Uh, yeah, I gave up on the brush because it's a bit of an effort, so I'm just gonna use this instead. Hopefully, this is gonna be a lot quicker. But. Right, I'm just gonna smash through this and get back to you at the end because I don't know how long this is gonna take. Ten seconds later. So I've used the wire wheel as much as I can to get off as all I can. And it's, it's done a pretty good job, but there's areas which are still a bit too far beyond being able to just use the wire wheel. So I'm actually gonna stop here and I need to get some rust converter because I just don't feel comfortable spraying straight over the top of it basically and sealing in that rust. So I'm gonna get some of that, which means I'm gonna have to pause for today. I guess what that means is uh, I'll catch you guys in the future again whenever that ends up being. Uh. Okay guys, I'm back. It's been a few days. I'm in a different location, same farm. Managed to find this product here, this rust converter spray by Jenna Light. I'll leave a link for this down in the description. I decided to go for the spray rather than the paint on ones that come in a little tub, or even though this is more expensive because I was reading the reviews and everyone was saying that the consistency was like milk. And I just thought if I'm doing stuff that's like upside down and what have you, it's just gonna run. So I thought I'd get the spray instead. It's a little bit more expensive, but it should be an easy application. So basically I've spent the entire morning masking up both sides of the car. This stuff takes 
three hours to dry, so I'm gonna get this on, wait three hours, and then I'll come back and get back to where I thought I would have been the other day. So yeah, basically, gonna get on and spray this. So this is just spraying this on all the areas that are a bit rusty, really. So this stuff is apparently, it says on here, to do cycles of about three to five minutes. So what I'm gonna do is do the other side, wait a couple of minutes, then come back to this, basically. So I thought I'd show you a before the three hour drying time. So this is four coats. I think I've done four coats. Yeah, four coats of the rust converter spray. Here it is if you wanted to actually see what it was called. Link is in the description. Three hours later. All right then, it's been three hours. I will show you what it looks like. But next step is gonna be this zinc galvanizing spray. So I'm just gonna give this a pretty thick coat just so I don't have to spray it again because this is the stuff that takes 24 hours to dry. So as you can see, it's got this weird shine to it, almost like it's still wet, but it is not, I can confirm. Yeah, I guess this stuff's done its job really. It's all completely dry. This is now ready for that zinc spray. Right, let's get this galvanizing spray on. Okay, I'm just gonna do the other side. It's pretty silver though. It's kind of weird seeing it all one uniform color again. 12 seconds later. All right, that's it for today. And yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in 24 hours when this has dried. So I'll also, I'll show you what this looks like closer up tomorrow when we get back. So yeah, see you guys in 24. 24 hours later. Right, it's been 24 hours and it's time to spray on this under seal. I'll also show you what I've done in the arches because I've decided I am going to put the arch liners back in because quite a lot of the area that I thought was going to be bad actually was pretty much fine. So obviously those arch liners do some sort of good in different areas. So I'll show you the silver and sort of what I've gone with terms of masking off and stuff. Yeah, as you can see, all looking silver, all looking ready to go. I've also plugged the holes, done that, where this mounts, plugged with some newspaper just because if obviously you spray that, you then can't put anything back through the thread because it will all be gummed up with the underseal. So those are all filled and ready to go. And then this is what I was talking about. So I've masked off here because I've shown you this side because this is where like the fuel filler neck is and all up here and everything was there was there was no rust or anything. And it was all just, if anything, just slightly dirty, but like pretty clean. So I've decided that I'm going to put the wheel arch liners in because if I leave them out, up there is just going to get absolutely absolutely filthy and I didn't want to cover that in under seal either because then that makes that part really annoying to work with if anything goes wrong with that in the future and to be honest it's easy for me to just take a wheel arch liner out and look to see what's going on in the future rather than just covering everything over so that's why I'm deciding to do that but yeah I thought I'd show you this as I said I would let's spray on some of this under seal I guess this is what it's all been for really isn't it Okay, so this is after one coat of this stuff and it is starting to dry. So I've got to wait between an hour and two hours for this to dry. So it's pretty warm today. I'm probably gonna go for the one hour as I know I'm gonna put the other coat on and then leave it. Yeah, this is what it looks like after one coat. As you can see, it's now black. Also, it smells like shoe polish, if you know what that smells like. One hour later. So I decided to crack on and just do the second coat. So this is, I basically used the whole can. So I'm gonna leave it overnight to dry because it says to do that on the can and that means I can then unmask everything tomorrow and stuff. This is where I'm gonna leave it for tonight and then I will be back tomorrow to put it all back together and take all the tape off. Okay, it's finally time. We're gonna start pulling this stuff off, all this masking off, putting it all back together, putting the wheel arch liners back in. Let's waste no more time. Let's just get on with this and get unmasking everything. Okay, sweet, yeah. Well, I'm gonna crack on with the other side and then we can get on with bolting everything back in. One minute, 37 seconds later. Okay, so fast forward a little bit, I have mounted up the brake line bracket and everything once again. So this is it. I guess finished if you weren't gonna put the liners back in. I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out, to be honest. Oh, I forgot to show you guys also what I've decided to do. You see all this awful line here. That's because if you look here, I've basically not really cleaned here, especially up here. I haven't really cleaned that much around here. And you can see it doesn't look that bad. And that's because those wheel arch liners are actually doing something. So this is why I'm putting them back in, because I don't want to get all up here and all up here and that lot, all just like filled with dirt and grime and stuff. If anything goes wrong with any of this sort of stuff, making this an issue in the future. So what? that's why I'm putting them back in. And that's why I stopped here, because there wasn't major rust. Wheel 
punch liner is back in. I'm just gonna smash through the other side and then I'll catch you guys when it's back on the ground and done, I guess. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. All right then, guys. It's finally done. It's actually taken me pretty much a month to actually finish this entire process, which is just ridiculous. It should not take that long. That's just down to my, uh, it's not really laziness. I just really didn't want to do this job. It's just one of those jobs that had to be done. I'm hoping I've done the right thing at this point in time. I don't know. Uh, by the looks of it, I think I've done what I can. I'm hoping this has helped you out either with how not to do it or just given you some sort of insight into how to tackle this sort of job so i'm hoping i haven't ruined the car for myself i mean if you're not fully confident with doing something like this there are companies that offer being able to do it i know motion motorsport they can do it for you worst case is i have to get something cut out and that would have had to have happened anyway so for the learning process and just getting to know my car a bit more i'd say it was worth it if i have to get stuff cut out at the end of the day then that'll just have to happen at a later date but at least i now know the situation of my car i don't have this thing weighing on my head so hopefully you guys have found this useful in some sort of way i'm gonna drive my car now because I haven't been able to drive it for the last few days. So that's going to do it for this one guys. Please subscribe if you found this interesting. I've got loads of other videos you can go check out as well. Like the video because that helps out a lot as well. Comment down below either if I've done something wrong or if this has made you realise you should try it. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one.